hey guys what's up welcome to show it better today we are going to see a time lapse render i did a few days ago so basically i modeled a building it was, it was a quick building just a facade um it was more tended to be more of a high-rise building um and i wanted just to get one image you know just a, a little bit of a image at you know at sunset more or less when the lights of the building were already on and yeah so basically this part of the video is the whole modeling part which is actually pretty basic uh what i recommend is always uh, grouping everything making everything in groups so it can be more organized and uh, making everything in components things that you're going to repeat like for example the windows the columns um, the balconies make them in components so when you have to edit them you don't have to edit all of them just one of them Also, uh, don't remember to do render tests so you got you can see where you're going with this. If if because maybe in the render it looks completely different, and yeah, so just don't remember to always always uh, do render tests. Remember you can download this 3D model, the Photoshop file and the final Im render images um, from the link in the description. Um, there you guys can follow along with the tutorial and you know, you can also help this channel out uh, making more videos. As you guys can see, I also added an HDRI dome light. So what you do with this is you go to the dome light and in the settings you just put your the, your the HDRI you want. So in this case I put an HD, HDRI that had more of a sunset feeling to it. So in this so in this package I also include the HDRI if you guys want to to use it. Also, I knew I was going to edit this in Photoshop a lot. You know, I was going to add vegetation, uh, some people, and you know, the whole the whole composition was going to be a little bit changed. So I didn't add too much detail to the context. Um, I think what what is important is, is that you render. For example, I put the two point perspective option, so all the lines would be vertical. That was that saves me a little bit of time in Photoshop, and also I put it in a four by three proportion of the image, right? So it looks more like a vertical image. You know, it's not so horizontal, but since the building is so tall, it gives it mu a much more uh, vertical feeling. Also, uh, I added the lights. Yeah, I, they were pretty basic. If there were just plain lights in every building as you guys can see here in the, in the, in the render test and it added some exterior lights that uh, were going to be for the streets that were going to give it a warmth to the street so we could differentiate it from the top of the building to the bottom of the building and also remember to render out your different render channels like your render ID your material ID um, your object ID this will help us out when we import it into Photoshop in selecting different kinds of materials and saving up much time a lot of time so here I imported everything into Photoshop as you guys can see with all the different channels and um, yeah remember to always group it in different folders so because you never know how big your Photoshop file is going to get so group it in different folders and be very organized so it will you know 
be be it won't, it won't be hard to change it later so as you guys can see I am making um, I'm changing the lights a little bit so I'm trying to make the balcony stand out a little bit more than the other lights so it can have you know an emphasis on the whole balcony thingy and since uh, since the glass didn't have as much reflection as I wanted to uh, I'm going to add a sky image on top of it and make it you know like if that if that was the reflection So as you guys can see, some of my images, I'm just looking at them from uh, from Google. So remember, Google is always a great source for downloading your images. Here, I'm trying to import some textures of night buildings. Um, so they would look like more, it has like more stuff inside, more or less. Um, this, is, this is always a trial and error, you know? Sometimes, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, and you have to work out something different. So it's not, I can tell you that this is not always a very linear process. It's not always the same steps, the same things to do. Sometimes it's, it is really a trial and error. You have to, you have to try some things and sometimes they're just not going to work out. Um, and it's okay. It's part of the whole process. I mean, I'm not really a professional architectural visualizer but I know for a fact because I've worked with many that many of the processes are like these you know you just have to try and see and, and that is how that is how you will learn by trying also I know I also, you guys, remember you can follow me on Instagram at Let's Show It Better and on Facebook at Let's Show It Better. Over there, we have different type of content that is also very, very cool if you guys want to check it out a little bit. So as you guys can see here, uh, in this type of texture I'm applying, uh, I, I expanded the texture to three floors, not to one and I saw that it was uh, looking a little bit better. So the ones that I did before, I erased them and did them again, as in the other method, right? Um, this is not gonna look as visible as we all think, cause you know, it kind of looks like fake. So what we're trying to do is more of a blending, blending it in with the whole context uh, to have the same color as the sky more or less, cause that's the whole reflection game. And sometimes it can get tricky, right? Because because the method the methods you use for uh, previous images sometimes just don't work in in some images, and I don't know. That's one of the things that just happen. I also have a 3D LUT uh, that um, that comes in with the file, with the PSD file. If you guys wanna import it which is also pretty good and for those of you that don't know it just helps you improve the you know just merge the whole image you know with the, with the colors and the contrast it just makes it more of a complete image so it, it really helps a lot when when things are different colors or things have different contrasts so here I'm just importing the trees these trees are from my material library because what, what I basically want to do here is just add a a foreground and a middle plane so it can give an image the image a lot of more depth right so if I put some trees some big trees in the front in the front corners of the image and then I put another trees in the middle middle ground it will give it a certain transition from the viewer to the whole building right it won't look as flat and I'm also warming up 
the whole all the balconies all the balcony lights so they can match the warmthness of of the street lights and it can have a contrast right like the blue sky versus the warm tone of the street and the balconies I also manually added some painted lights which you know it's, it would be it can be your option if you want to do it like that or not So in this case the, the people I added were just with the brushes because they were going to look dark anyways but well it's your option you can do it also uh, with, with with pictures of people as well and here I am adding some street lights just to, to finish off this thing and the, the camera raw filter is always very important so you can add a little bit more detail and adjust the colors just how, how you want them to it's a very cool tool and it's very versatile so sometimes after I, I put the camera off filter I leave it as it is or sometimes I add it to Visco the photo editing program because it just sometimes had has some filters that give it that final touch uh, so yeah that's how the image looked i hope you guys enjoy this video and see you guys in the next one